but like name it. What happened? What did they do? And put the fear of God in the body of Christ and specifically put the fear of God in the teachers and leaders and ministers in the body of Christ. What's going on, guys? Back with another episode of the Wake Up and Win podcast. Blaze here, and I'm excited to talk to you again today. I appreciate all your comments, all your kind comments on the uh, Montana Post. And those of you who checked out my wife's blog, check it out at ChristinaFaray.com. She tells a story how we got to Montana, how we kind of made some big moves in our lives, and uh, really some leaps of faith. But today, I want to talk to you guys. I'm going to be reacting to this Lisa Bevere post. And what's interesting about this, I mean, I've seen people posting this everywhere and I frankly have not watched it. I think it's about four or five days old. Um, that's how up to speed I am on everything right now. But uh, I wanted to just respond kind of live to this. I literally just watched it for the first time. So I don't even remember everything that was said. I want to go back and watch it live with you guys and respond to this. Uh, frankly, not because I want to, I, I see that there's a lot of folks in the, um, IHOPKC advocacy community, as well as with the Gateway advocacy community, um, and just in the SA advocacy community for victims that are really taking her to task on this post. So I thought, what is she saying? What's going on? And and frankly, at at this point of the game, I, you know, I am not a professional advocate. I do not. I mean, I have definitely done some homework on advocacy and talked to a lot of people, uh, but I still would say I'm really always growing. I've got people in the advocacy community that reach out to me after certain posts. They say, hey, is that? are you sure that's the way you want to say it? I'm like, please instruct me. Give me give me some help. And I'm always open uh, because I'm always learning. I'm always growing. I don't agree with everything from every single advocate, nor does every advocate in this space agree on certain things, but I'm always open to listening. So with this one, I want to take a listen to what a female voice uh, minister is saying about the current exposures with Mike Bickle, who Mike Bickle is has been outed for, uh, and all of you guys know this mostly, but some of you guys are just coming on, Mike Bickle has been outed for the um, SA of a starting at age four. And that is, that is, she's put her own name out there. She's told her story. You can go back and listen to it on our podcast, Tammy Woods. Um, that is terrible. Okay. That doesn't, that is terrible. Then you've got Robert Morris, who's been outed for the exact same thing for, for someone that was a child at age 12. Mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. And people would say, well, these things were decades ago. Do I care that it was a dec decades ago? Did you know that that just means these women have been carrying this and the effects of it for decades? And these men have continued to succeed at high levels and high levels of influence uh, without any actual real church discipline, not just church discipline, but this is called illegal activity. So this is not something where we go, oh, you're just calling them out because you're bitter and you're mean, you're gossiping. No, 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 no. These are legal issues, folks. But let's go ahead and listen to what she said. Let's dive in. Um, here we go. Let's see. And and so we need to stop fighting each other, stop talking bad about the ministers who, I mean, you guys, I want to spank a bunch of people and put a bunch of people on timeout. I get that. But the truth is they're not my servants. Hang on. Hang on. Fighting each other who, I mean, you guys, I want to spank a bunch of people and put a bunch of people on timeout. I get that. But the spank a bunch of people and put a bunch of people in timeout. I get that. When you say you get that, what do you mean? You want to spank a bunch of people and put a bunch of people in timeout? This is not like, hang, hang on a second. Timeout. Since when did, did ministers being uh, exposed for abuse? of a minor becomes something that you take a time out from. Oh, you just get a little time out. What are you talking about? Let's keep going. Truth is they're not my servants. That's they're right. And, and, and God's, I'm not sure who that is, but I'm wondering why you said that's right. Dealing with them. And so I'm not going to jump on the bad way and be like, I always knew it. All right. So she said, the truth is they're not my servants. Okay. Well, Actually, they are a servant of the body of Christ, and they definitely set themselves up to be leaders and servants to the body of Christ. And the biblical the the biblical uh, process here would be to actually judge 
the leaders of the body of Christ. Okay. And so we're not jumping on a bandwagon saying, I always knew. In fact, all due respect to John and Lisa Bevere, who I've appreciated at different times over the years, but all due respect here, Lisa, the majority of people are not saying we knew all the time. I, I definitely like when it comes to Robert Morris, pastor Robert Morris, most people are like, we didn't know nothing. In fact, this is the most devastating news that we could ever imagine. And this isn't us saying, oh, we knew the whole time. We knew the whole time. What did she say? Uh, I don't want to jump on the back. Let's jump on the bad wagon and be like, I always knew it. I don't want to jump on the bandwagon and say, I always knew it. What bandwagon is saying I always knew it? Hey guys, real quick, just want to let you know that this podcast is brought to you by Wake Up and Win Insurance, helping clients with their term life, whole life, index universal life, as well as retirement options such as overfunding index universal life and utilizing annuities for families. We've been doing this now for about eight years, helping clients all over the United States utilize over 20 different A-rated life insurance companies. And I'm decent at what I do. I'm definitely happy to help you. If you'd like to have a consultation, then just click the link below. I'm happy to talk to you. Zero pressure. If you need my help, I can definitely help you. Okay. Click the link below and book an appointment and we'll see if we can help you out. Take care and keep enjoying the podcast. Like maybe there's a couple of people out there that are like, I knew he was a bad apple. I knew he was bad. But like most people are not saying that. Most people are like, this is devastating my personal life because many of them are from that church and others are saying, this is devastating my theology because I've taken a ton of uh, input from some of these ministers. And not only that, but for, for a lot of these folks, they're going, wait a second, this is totally messing with my actual faith because if these type of people can be preaching these type of messages, uh, walking in some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, impacting nations, impacting the body of Christ, and they're doing these things or hiding these things in their closet, illegal activities, then, I mean, it messes. Lisa, I, you got to understand, this messes with people's minds. It messes with people's faith. Like, anyway, let's keep listening. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't back on me. Mm -mm. None of us, none of us uh, have, <laughs> are totally innocent. None of us are. So None of us are totally innocent. Okay. None of us are totally innocent. That would be a correct statement. None of us are totally innocent. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Um, let's see what she says next. Yeah, we may not have done what's getting them in trouble, but man, I, I just, again, I'm not going to curse the people that God is disciplining with because whenever... Okay, we may have not done what got them in trouble. Lisa, what got them in trouble? Can you name it? Can you name what got them in trouble? Because it's not, it's not a small matter. And the fact that you can't name it seems problematic to me. This is illegal activity. This is things that put uh, people in prison. I, I personally believe it should pe put people in prison for life. This thing is so, this issue is so devastating to the, to the rest of the lives of the victims, like literally decade upon decade, the marriages, the relationships, the children, the grandchildren, it's devastating. And many of these people that do this type of thing, ministers, they just kind of get a slap on the hand because statute of limitations, right? Or civil suit. And people go, well, they were asking for a lot of money. Yeah, they should be asking for that person to be in prison, but they can't. And yeah, there should be a lot of money. There should be restitution actually given. Imagine, imagine the amount of uh, financial devastation this takes a toll on people's lives and marriages and, and so on and so forth. And they have to get therapy and all these different things, rightly so. And so to say, we haven't done what they did. Why don't you just say what they did? So, so your audience can know, because some people don't even know what you're talking about. Because most people just kind of sweep this stuff under the rug and they go, oh, it's just a probably a false accusation or this, that, or the other. But these people, Cindy Klimashar, Klimashar coming out with this as early as 2005, trying to seek justice and just getting swept under the rug by the elders of the Church of Gateway. Um, even now, a lot of the new elders just realizing what actually happened. Like there's no sitting out, time out. This is called an illegal activity that frankly, we need to revisit. And I believe we are in many states, the statute of limitations on these things. Um, okay, let's let's finish up what she's about to say about the nations of it, it, nations judging Israel, God judging Israel, et cetera. Let's see. 
not going to curse the people that God is disciplining. I'm not going to curse the people that God is disciplining. Okay. So, but would you rebuke? Would you speak the truth about what they're, what they're doing when they've gone on for 40 years of popular, uh, praise, personal praise in their ministries, uh, very profitable ministries. Um, many of them, it's like a business model for them. And now they're getting caught and you're saying, don't curse them. What do you mean? Don't curse them. Who's cursing them? I, I have not seen people cursing these ministers. And if they, I'm sure there's people cursing these ministers out there, but the majority, 99% of what's happening, uh, Ms. Bevere, is we are simply calling to account the leadership in the body of Christ. Do not, do not set yourself up to be a teacher, my brothers, be, knowing therefore that those who teach will be judged more harshly. Now, I believe that means more harshly by the Lord. But I also believe that even in this temporal state, they will be more judged, har, judged more harshly by man. And you know that because you're a teacher in the body of Christ. So you know that the judgment comes a little bit harder when you open your mouth to speak publicly like you're doing and instructing the body of Christ in this matter right now. Yes, the judgment's going to come a little bit harshly. And I wish that you could speak a little bit more definitely without cursing. I, I personally, I bless Robert Morris. I bless Mike Bickle to come to full openness and honesty and repentance because I believe their souls are in danger, Lisa. Do you believe that? Or do you believe they need to sit down and take a time out for the exploitation? Hidden under the rug for many, many years. And did you, you know this, Lisa, I think that when this happens, when the, somebody is um, does these type of things, the percentage of, of the people that do this again and again and again is very, very, very high. So the accountability was frankly not there 20, 30, 40 years ago. So what would make you think that a little slap on the hand, a little sit down would make this work out? Sometimes the judgment of God is actually the church in the body of Christ actually speaking. What is it? Uh, First Timothy, he says, uh, rebuke in the presence of all. Not curse, Lisa. No one's cursing them. I'm not cursing Mike Bickle. We're not cursing Robert Morris, but we are saying rebuke in the presence of all. And, and frankly, it's been a very limited number of charismatic leaders in the body of Christ that are willing to actually rebuke. Most of them are doing what you're doing, either avoiding it completely or waiting till, you know, goodness gracious, months, months and months later till you finally have to say something. And then they're like, well, it seems kind of bad. But like, name it. What happened? What did they do? And put the fear of God in the body of Christ and specifically put the fear of God in the teachers and leaders and ministers in the body of Christ. Because what's happening right now with, with just the smut from the leadership in the body of Christ in this area of sexual immorality, but also is an ap absolute pandemic, okay? It's an absolute uh, epidemic. It is dangerous. It is terrible. And we've got to have people in positions like yourself, you and your husband, that would come out and name it and actually say what they did was wrong and they need to be held accountable within the body of Christ and according to the law. Because whenever Israel was being disciplined by another nation, God would use other nations to discipline them. Then he would deal with the nation that he'd use to discipline them. So I don't want to, I want to keep. Okay. So I hear you. I hear you. And that's makes for a great sermon, but we're not another nation. We are the brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. We're not another nation, Lisa. We're not another nation. Like we are the body of Christ judging the body of Christ. Okay. We are actually uh, rebuking in the presence of all. And so should we curse them? No, actually we should beg for their soul. We should pray for their soul. Uh, but we've got to name it and speak it and not be afraid to do that and think that, oh, if I call out what they've done and I call out that how horrid of a sin this was, that, oh, God's going to judge me for that. Like that is that is some like, I don't know what kind of theology that is to, to post, to, to plant that on this. But yeah, I mean, if you turn into like a, a witch and I'm not talking about you, I'm just saying like 
practicing witchcraft and cursing these people and speaking cursing against them. Yeah, that's that's bad. You don't want to do that, right? But that's not what that's not what we're doing. What we're doing is calling for transparency and repentance. Lisa, it doesn't it disappoint you that we have yet to hear a actual full confession from Mike Bickle when Tammy Woods came out and said it started when I and we still haven't heard a confession from Mike Bickle. Doesn't that concern you that we listen to this man? Many in the in the charismatic body of Christ listen to this man for 40 years. And it doesn't concern you that he has not actually repented publicly for this? What about Robert Morris? Like zero public rep- uh, repentance and admission regarding this. All he said was he had an issue with a young lady many years ago. That is not a young lady. So I see... As a preacher myself, I see the utilization of that story of the Israel and being je- God using other nations like Nebuchadnezzar judged Israel through ba- God used Nebuchadnezzar through Babylon, etc. And then he ended up uh, judging Babylon because they went overboard. I get all that. But you've got to understand and we've got to understand as the body of Christ, like we cannot be afraid to speak up. Why is it taking these low level podcasters to actually speak out and speak up to force transparency when you guys are like literally running around in the body of Christ with these like huge profitable ministries and all this influence and we can't get you to speak up from day one. And I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about across the board from day one. We had to twist and beg the prophetic movement to acknowledge that spiritual abuse and uh, and clergy SA was actually happening for, <laughs> and it took months and months for us to beg for this. Like the respect level of the body of Christ for these what we call leaders is going down and down and down, and we might be seeing a change of the guard because of that. And so, with that said, I bless Lisa. I hope she, that she hears the response. Um, she may never hear this response from me, but she'll probably hear it from many others. She probably already heard it from many others. I hope she, that she has ears to hear. And uh, in fact, let's just pray. Holy Spirit, we ask you to give us as the body of Christ, leaders in the body of Christ and the body of Christ as a whole, ears to hear and eyes to see what you're doing right now in the body of Christ to expose uh, abusers and what our place would be to actually call them out and call them publicly to repentance. And I pray you would give boldness. I pray, pray that boldness was would arise in the generation that is in Mike Bickle's generation, as well as Robert Morris's generation. I pray that boldness would arise in that generation to call it what it is, to call it out and not to be afraid and not to cower. I pray for all of us that we would bless and not curse. I pray for the souls of these men that are caught doing these things. I pray for full repentance. I pray that the salvation of their souls would be a real thing and that they would turn to you. And Lord, I pray that they would bring restoration and restitution, absolute restitution, that those who have done these things would um, would bow out, would bow out and they would be like Zacchaeus and they would give double. They would give full restitution and more to those who need it, to the victims, Lord. We pray for comfort for the victims of these crimes, um, that you would bring comfort, you would bring restoration, you'd bring healing, you'd bring hope that's found in the gospel. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Guys, thanks for joining in for another episode. It's great to have you here. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode. God bless you. Peace out.